Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. I was reading up on a murder that happened in 2007. Dr. William Pettit took the stand to testify. I apologize if I mispronounce his name. I don't know all the details about this horrible crime, but I do know that the man was hit in the head and tied up in the basement. His wife, according to some of the details that I've been able to gather, she was sent to the bank to retrieve $15,000. So she returned home. Uh, I don't know when and how things happened, but during the process, the two men had raped their 17-year-old daughter and their 11-year-old daughter, and then had killed the three. The two young girls were strapped to their beds, had gasoline poured on them, and were lit on fire. The doctor was able to untie his hands and hop to a neighbor's to get some help. But sadly, at this point, his, his wife and his two daughters were already dead. The two men had stolen the doctor's car and were later apprehended by the police. So right now, they're trying the first attacker. The charges are capital felony, multiple murder, arson, rape, and kidnapping. So the man has confessed and is trying to plea bargain. The prosecutors have turned this down. He's asking for life imprisonment without parole. So I'm assuming at this point, without further investigation, perhaps the state that he's in happens to have the death penalty. So he's trying to avoid the punishment. So once this trial is done, they're going to have a second trial for the second attacker. So these two men were on parole, and at this point I don't know what they were on parole for. But so they had obviously had a criminal history, and now look what they've done. They've taken the lives of three people, one of which was an 11-year-old child. The reason I'm talking about this particular incident is because it's not unique to our society. Western society, these types of things happen all the time. There's rapes, murders, they happen on a daily basis. So as a Muslim, I believe in Sharia law. And everybody believes this, you know, Sharia law is a really horrible word, and, and that's because of lack of understanding. Under Sharia law, one of the aspects of punishment is an eye for an eye. The teachings in the Quran are that you can only take a human life for those that create mischief in the land, which could be many things such as treason, or for someone who has killed, meaning that they can be punished eye for an eye, a death for a death. Obviously, this is a very simplified explanation of this, but just like in the Western legal system, there is a trial. There is a process in which they go through to determine whether this person is guilty before they inflict the punishment. Even before I became a Muslim, when I would see this type of horrible crime committed, I believed that these people should get the death penalty. I mean, what gives someone the right to take someone else's life and then turn around and plea bargain so that they don't have to lose theirs? I mean, th th that's a cowardly thing. Obviously, they were cowards in the first place for even committing such a crime. So the question I have is, how do you feel about something like this? Should these two men be allowed to go to jail and spend the rest of their lives? I mean, I'm not saying jail is a nice place, but why shouldn't they be punished? Equal. Justice. You want justice? The punishment should be equal to the crime. They killed three women, put them through harsh torment. I'm guessing they probably just assumed, based on the blood loss of the husband, that he was going to die anyway, so they just left him. See, our system is based on the idea that we hope that some of these people will reform. But if you look at many, many stats, many, many of these criminals are repeat offenders. And take a look. Go look at the statistics for, any, for the countries you live in, especially in Western society. How many crimes are repeat offenders? Sex offenders, 90% of them are repeat offenders. Meaning we try these people, they get convicted, they go to jail, they come out, they commit the crime again. 90%, and we know this, 90% of the time they repeat. So why do we keep releasing them? We spend so much money to protect ourselves at home on security systems, motion lights. I mean, these are not for terrorists. I mean, a terrorist is not going to come to my neighborhood and blow up my house. I mean, this is to protect us from the people we live with. So I'm curious as to what you think. I mean, I personally believe that Sharia law is a better system. Under Sharia law, these men would get the death penalty. But in our system, they get to make deals, they get free meals, a roof over their heads, access to television, computers, education. Meanwhile, there's how many people, thousands, maybe even millions of people in Western cultures that are sitting on the streets that don't even have one meal a day. So why do we cater to these criminals all the time? Anyway, I'm curious to see what you think. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you.